years. Mohan, sorry to interrupt you. As you see, the, the police there, the, there's, there's already some trouble. They're beating the crowd back here. Uh, while the, the casket has been uh, taken through the gates there, they're holding back uh, large numbers of the crowd. But um, I'm not sure what, what, what's, what's going on here. You can see these pictures too, right? Marwan, hang on, Marwan is speaking, we can't hear him, hang on a second. Marwan, I think we can hear you now. I have never seen security forces attack a funeral with such audacity, with such chutzpah, the way this scene is, is evolving right now in front of us. They are just trying to carry and they're trying to bury one of their own and the police is there as if there is an enemy ahead of them. It's their own victim being buried and here they are with such, uh, with such an incredible, incredible rudeness. Again, I mean, I have, I have reported, I have analyzed, I have looked at news throughout the world for decades and I've never seen a scene like this. Look at that. Attacking innocent people, carrying a casket. I, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say anymore. W what are they expecting now? This is unbelievable. Unbelievable. Oh my God. Such disrespect for the dead and for those who are mourning the dead. No respect for people alive and no respect for the people dead. Adrian, please tell me and maybe our, our viewers around the world will tell us how are these people a threat to Israel? How are they a threat to security? They are in their courtyard trying to mourn one of their own dead. How is that a security threat to anyone? How is that disorderly? Why does that require this kind of repression, this kind of violence on the part of Israelis? And again, these people are under orders to carry such an attack. These people don't carry such attack on their own. They have been ordered to do this. And the world is watching. The world is watching. Uh, probably they will be calling it tomorrow counter-terrorism. I want to know how is this a security threat? How is this terrorism? To be attacking innocent people, civilians, trying to mourn one of their own, a victim of Israeli occupation. Unprecedented. Utterly criminal. Inhumane. This is the so-called one and only democracy in the Middle East. In the middle of Jerusalem, the holy city, where a journalist killed yesterday is being honored by her own community, by her family and fans, being disrupted by Israeli security forces, colonial forces. Unheard of, unseen before, unprecedented. This is, a, this is the time for, for international, for outside powers to intervene. Palestinian people need, do need protection. I mean, word, this word, is the time for the UN to intervene. Word, words, words fail me, Marwan. I, I, astonishing scenes here from, from occupied East Jerusalem. Um, I, I, I don't, hang on, I just want to try and work out what, what actually happened here. I think we've got, we can show you some, some pictures 
of, of, of what happened a few moments ago, Mama, that you can see them on the, on the, the right-hand side of, of, of your screen, where the police... I don't know what these police thought they were trying to do at this point. There was no one threatening them, whether they were trying to hold the, cr the crowd back to stop them leaving. Uh, the, uh, the soldiers, they're not police. Um, I don't know whether they were trying to hold the, the crowd back to stop them um, following uh, the, the coffin as it, as it was taken out of that compound. I, I, don't, I, I can't work out what they were, what they were doing. Uh, do you have any, can you, do you have any idea, Marwan, from what you can see there? I, I, I think they probably thought that whatever orders they gave, whatever presumably understanding that they had, that what the funeral is supposed to be like, and who's supposed to go out and in, and who's supposed to honor Shireen, whatever they have in their mind, nothing excuses, nothing justifies, nothing justifies an attack on innocent people carrying a coffin, trying to honor, trying to bury one of their own. Absolutely nothing justifies that, nothing excuses that. Those security forces are not supposed to be in a courtyard. What are they doing in the courtyard when no one is being threatened? You know, we try to, we try to, we, we as rational human beings, we try to understand, we try to reach some sort of reasonable conclusion. But this image, Adrian, has no explanation. This is madness. How do you explain madness? How do you justify madness? I'm sure they, I mean, you want to investigate? Investigate. Here you have. Okay. It's right there. It's clear to the whole world to see. Mawan, I, I, many thanks indeed for, for, for that. Stay with, stay with us. I just want to go to um, live to talk about East Jerusalem. Uh, my colleague Imran Khan is, uh, is on the, uh, the procession route, uh, not far from the church, where the funeral service is due to happen a little later. Um, uh, Imran, uh, uh, what are you hearing about, about what's going on here at the moment? Well, what's going on is there was some uh, pushing and shoving between the Israeli army and the people who wanted to take Shireen's body, our colleague, uh, to where I'm standing right now. They wanted to walk with her body. They didn't want to go in the cars. The Israeli army suggest, said that they were only allowed to take her by car. There was intense negotiations going on. Indeed, our bureau chief of Al Jazeera Arabic for uh, Jerusalem, Walid Omri, uh, was surrounded by people. They were asking him to try and intervene. Of course, he couldn't do anything. And then we saw the Israeli forces enter the courtyard using stun grenades, using smoke grenades, and that's why we see the scenes that are, are taking place right now. All of this is happening because the Israeli police will not allow them to walk. It's a 45-minute walk from where they are to where we are. It would have been a very peaceful walk, but now things are escalating. This is going to delay everything significantly. There will also be big problems within the area itself. Within the area itself is Sheikh Jarrah. You may remember protests taking place in Sheikh Jarrah over the last year where Israelis forcibly evicted Palestinian families. Already a source of quite big attention. A lot of those families uh, are there to show their support for Shireen Abu Akhle. Like I said earlier, she's known here as the daughter of Jerusalem. This outpouring of emotion now is turned violent, and that's because the Israeli army, the Israeli soldiers, entered into the courtyard. We're seeing now a, a, a hearse uh, has been reversed uh, to, to the, the back of the hospital where Shireen's casket uh, is. Uh, right now, Imran, as you as you said, it, it seems that that uh, the, uh, the security forces have uh, have got their way. They're they're not allowing uh, any sort of procession uh, to to walk uh, to with Shireen's casket to walk to uh, the church where the funeral service is due to be held. It it, it appears from what we're seeing now uh, that that her casket will be driven uh, to the church. That's right. Well, that's what we're hearing. We're not sure. That crowd isn't going to really back down, though. It wants to be able to make the walk. And I'm just going to get out of the way and show you the scene here. 
uh, the Israeli soldiers, uh, the Israeli police rather, have actually barricaded off the entrance into the church. They're allowing residents to go in and people who want to go to the funeral service, but we've already been told by people who have approached us, the Israeli police are actually asking whether you're Christian or Muslim. If you're Muslim, they're not allowing you in. We've heard that from two people who have actually come up to us and told us that. So. By the time the procession actually gets here, we are expecting a large number of crowds. But like you say, those pictures that you're seeing uh, from uh, the top of Sheikh Jarrah, from where the French hospital is, where the morgue, where my colleague's body lays, uh, whether that's going to happen anytime soon remains to be seen. But the key now is these, these uh, mourners who want to walk with the body. I don't know if that's going to be allowed to happen. There's confusion here as to whether uh, and how they're going to reach it. All right, everyone, stay with us. I mean, we're, we're still seeing the, these, these live pictures here. And, it, and it's very difficult for you uh, because you're, you're out on the street there. You can't actually see what's, what's going on at the moment. We can. Uh, the, the hearse uh, carrying Shireen's casket is now beginning uh, to move <clears throat> through this crowd now towards the gate of, uh, of that compound. Uh, and let's just remind you that earlier, uh, mourners tried to, to carry Shireen's coffin, the coffin rather, uh, out of that hospital compound, but the, the Israeli army uh, started to, uh, uh, to attack people who were, who were carrying the coffin. Uh, this apparently is because they refused to allow it to be carried through the, the streets to uh, the church where the funeral service is, is due to happen. It now seems that, that, that a hearse uh, will be uh, carrying her body to the church. Uh, as, uh, as we speak, um, that hearse moving very slowly through that crowd that has gathered there at the French hospital. People obviously uh, still very angry, uh, feelings running very, very high. Uh, Let's just, I'm just going to let this play out for a moment. Let's just, let's just listen and, and watch to, to what, at, at what's going on here. being thrown onto the roof of the, the, the hearse there, carrying our colleague uh, Shireen's uh, body. And the army there pulling, down, pulling off Palestinian flags that, had been, that, that, that mourners had tried to, uh, to put onto the, the vehicle as it left. So the, the hearse has now left the compound. Uh, the army there stopping mourners from leaving the compound and accompanying the hearse. There are a lot of people, though, still outside as you can see, they're pulling people now out of the hearse. Uh, mourners who were, who were inside the hearse with Shireen's casket are being forcibly removed and the vehicle now being allowed to, uh, to continue uh, its journey. Imran, as I said, I, I know you, you couldn't see any of that, but, but you, could, you could certainly hear what was going on and you could hear my description of it. It seems now that the hearse is, uh, or has begun to make its way uh, toward you there. Well, that's... Well, actually, Adrian, I can see the pictures. We have a screen here where I'm looking at all those pictures. We're also getting information uh, from that area as well. Now, the car has actually left. It's about a 10-minute drive to where we are now. Uh, the mourners uh, will leave that area. They'll also either walk or get in cars and come here. But that's the street down there where they're going to come, where the Greek patriarch, a very key church is, where the funeral service is going to take place. The Israeli police are... Uh, checking IDs of everybody walking in. We've already heard, as I said, uh, but the uh, Israeli police are asking people whether they're Christian or Muslim. If you're Muslim, they're not allowing you in. That's been told to us by two different people who have come, who have just told us that all they really want to do is come in and pay their last respects. That's the scene there. 
Uh, the scene at the French hospital, that is a huge crowd. Uh, we weren't expecting a number of uh, people, a uh, crowd that large, to be there at that moment. We were expecting a large crowd to be here. Indeed, uh, a lot of Israeli police are actually backing up. I've seen one, two, three, four vehicles actually go past us into uh, uh, the street adjacent to us, and a large number of police walk in. So clearly, the Israeli police have mounted a very big security operation. But remember, this is just a, the second part. The funeral service that takes place here uh, is going to be uh, is going to take place very shortly once that body arrives. All right, Imran, many thanks indeed for the moment. We'll be back with you uh, shortly. That's uh, Al Jazeera's Imran Khan uh, there in occupied East Jerusalem. Uh, I mean, these, uh, as I said earlier, I mean, it, it's, words fail me here, these astonishing scenes that we're seeing uh, there uh, from occupied East Jerusalem. Uh, just want to bring in. Uh, Al Jazeera's uh, senior political analyst Marwan Bashara again. Uh, he's in London and he's been watching this unfold with us over the uh, the last 15, 20 minutes or so. Uh, uh, Marwan, I mean, where, where do we start with this? Well, you know, we, we start actually on, uh, on the idea that um, all of this, if it was meant to uh, implement a certain policy, it could have been done in a, in a, in a non-violent way. You have overly um, armed security forces uh, facing down a uh, few civilian women and men trying to honor uh, their dead family member or colleague. The fact that such violence was used could not be justified by any security means or by any policy means. The, the way you and I and the rest of the world has watched can only be explained by sadism, humiliation, breaking down the will of those people who are trying to honor a colleague, a family member. What, what I'm really trying to focus on is the fact that even if the Israel wanted certain things to go in a certain way, such violence against a funeral against civilians is unprecedented. It can only be explained by a certain sadism, humiliation, violence, and a habit, just as we are seeing now. There is no need for such an overly armed security forces and army to be attacking people in mourning, people in mourning, which means passive which means in a solemn moment in their life trying to honor one of their own. So the fact that there is such a humiliation, such breaking of, 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 of a will of a people with such sadism, that is unprecedented. And all of this being broadcast live to the world. Absolutely, you know, we've heard before, and I, you know, I've, I've, I've learned it over the years, and I've taught it over the years, but I never really understood it. There is this uh, mantra in Israel that says, Israel will do what it must, and the world could say whatever it will. And, and, and it's only now that is haunting me what this actually means, that Israel will do whatever it wants, any which way it wants. And it doesn't matter what the rest of the world thinks. It certainly doesn't matter as long as London and Washington and Paris are supporting the, the, the Israeli government. Who cares what the rest of the world says, right? But that's the situation we're faced with, that Israel is doing whatever Israel wants, including attacking a peaceful funeral and a courtyard, in a courtyard, not threatening anyone, not, not instigating against anyone, not menacing anyone. And they could have stopped it by simply blocking their way out of the courtyard. But the way they were attacked, the way they were humiliated by bats and batons, that's just meant to humiliate. That's just sadistic. That's just utterly mad. That cannot be excused or justified or explained away by some sort of a security uh, 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 logic or rationale. There is no security logic or rationale in beating up people in a funeral, in a courtyard. I, I, I want to also 
to talk about about the way uh, the world's reaction in, in in the way that the the world seems to look the other way sometimes when when injustice like this as as, as we're seeing it play out here um, uh, goes on we, we as you know in here in the studio we have a computer which which is, is in front of us which our viewers can't see but but when we're sitting here in front of the camera we we can see and it has the latest breaking news stories coming in from news agencies all over the world uh, and I was just looking down to see what what the news agencies were saying about about what we're what we're seeing here uh, Marwan so far there's, there's there's one breaking news alert as, as they call it from the Agence, uh, Agence France Press news agency. It says violence erupts as journalists' coffin emerges from Jerusalem hospital. That's it. Violence erupts. Yeah. <laughs> what, but you what? know, I, yeah. I, I think I think moving forward, uh, uh, Adrian. I mean, I have a, I have a hunch, and, and it kind of changed over the days. I mean, two days ago, I was uh, yesterday morning, I was quite pessimistic and depressed about all of this. But I'm beginning to think more and more that perhaps we are at some sort of a crossroad at this point in time with these events taking place, and not just because of the killing of our colleague, because of Israel's behavior, because of the arrogance of Israel power. And you know, arrogance breeds stupidity. And what we're seeing unravel in front of our eyes now is sadistic stupidity. And I tell you how I see this and why I think this might actually be something more than what it is and the way you and I are looking at it. I am old enough to remember images from a naked Vietnamese woman burned by the napalm changing the course of the war in Vietnam, not because the image changed it, because it was a breaking point in that war in Vietnam. And that image expressed the change in the war in Vietnam. I remember the killing of a Nicaraguan journalist changed the Somoza government in Nicaragua. I remember taking out dead nuns in El Salvador, that image changing the course of the civil war in El Salvador. I remember Abu Ghraib and that how that was the cross, that was the turning point for the American war in Iraq. I remember the image of Muhammad al-Durra killed in the, in the arms of his father in Gaza in 2000 and how that image was an, a turning point for Israel to withdraw out of Gaza in 2005. I remember images like that. I remember image of the young Palestinian All right. generation slapping an Israeli Marvin, soldier just a few, few I'm, years I'm ago. I'm sorry to, to in, interrupt you. Yeah, Marvin, I'm, uh, Marvin, I'm sorry to, to interrupt you. Let's go back to Imran Khan in occupied East Jerusalem. Um, the, the, the hearse carrying uh, Shireen's casket has now arrived there. Uh, Im, Imran? Yeah, the, the casket is inside that car just there with the cross on top. It is going up into the church, which is going to get slightly closer to, to give you a better look. You see all the people around us. They're clapping. Shireen's body is now entering, entering inside. A Palestinian flag has been hoisted up. The car slowly makes its way through that packed crowd. The Israeli police are now moving in to remove that flag. The flag is still being waved. We're being pushed back. The Israeli police are pushing us back now. I don't know if you can still hear me. I think you can. The Israeli police want to remove that Palestinian flag. The Palestinian flag is actually illegal uh, to display. They pushed us back with the car carrying that casket is still moving ever closer to the church. It's only a few meters up the road. The Israeli police, you can see there, pushing us back from this barricade. And the car is going through. So that's where the funeral service is taking place. Lots of people surrounding us, you can probably hear. So that idea of people actually walking uh, hasn't happened. The body has been brought here by car, as you've just seen. Adrian? All right, Imran, many thanks uh, indeed for, for the moment. Uh, as you see there, the, the, the hearse carrying uh, our colleague, uh, Serena Abu Akleh, has now uh, arrived uh, at uh, the church where the funeral service uh, will happen very shortly let's um, let's just listen in once again to, to to the atmosphere there
By our blood and our soul, we will revenge our death. They were, they were chanting, the, your death, they were chanting uh, there, the, uh, as we heard uh, uh, the, the crowd um, who were pushed back uh, by uh, Israeli forces, not allowed to, uh, to follow the, the coffin as far as uh, the, uh, the church. Let's uh, go live now to my colleague, Nick Clark, uh, who is, is very near to where, where Imran is and where these pictures we're seeing uh, right now are, are, are coming from. Nick, uh, the, tell us something about the, the, the mood there right now. Adrian, Adrian, thanks very much. Yes, indeed. So Imran is at the other end of the street. This is the church building here, the Greek Catholic church, where the uh, funeral ceremony is going to take place. There's going to be a service in there. You're right, I don't think our picture can show you that, but you can... Uh, the hearse arrived after the Israeli... The scenes we saw of the Israeli security forces saying that they could not, the procession couldn't walk here, that they had to drive here in the hearse. That has now arrived, the body has arrived. I'm going to straight away go to uh, Reverend Father Simon Corey, who's actually going to take, uh, take over the, uh, the part of the clergy here, he's going to take over the service here and talk about it. What do you make, sir, first of all, of the scenes that we've seen? I think this is the violence and the I want to tell you that uh, nobody can compare the Palestinian case with any other violence in the world or any other war. Because any nation that had a war, they, they still have their identity, their flag, their land. But we lost our land, our identity, our flag. And we are, we, the Palestinians were occupied from other nations. So you cannot compare the Palestinian case and the Palestinian problem sure. with any other war in the world. Listen, I know you need to go because you're going to take part in uh, conducting the service in a second. But can anything good come out of this appalling, terrible tragedy? Could there be a force for change in any way? I think Shireen, above the land, she had influence, but Shireen, under the land, she will have millions times of influence than she was before. If someone imagine that the influence of Shireen will stop, no. Now she will have influence all over the world. And we, believe, we don't believe in the love of the power. We believe in the power of love. We don't believe in the power of, of, of violence, never. And we don't believe in the armament. We believe in God, we believe in love, we believe in peace. We are people of peace. And we hope that the people that take decisions in the world, they will come back. In this Jerusalem, Jesus said on the cross, Father, pardon them because they don't know what they do. And after 2022 years, I repeat, in Jerusalem, on the same place that Jesus was walking in the Via Delia Rosa, God pardon them because they don't know what they say and what they do. Have you been surprised by the strength of feeling? What? By? Have you been surprised by the strength of feeling that we're seeing here today? I am never surprised. You can be in your life, you can be sad, you can be happy, but never be surprised. Even when Shireen was killed, I was not surprised because everything is expected in this, in this world. Because the man should be brother for his, for his brother, the man, not to be wolf for him and kill him. So we better let you go. Father, thank you so much indeed for your time. We do appreciate it. Uh, that's Father Curry. He's actually taking part in the service that will be getting underway very soon. Uh, not quite sure what's happened as far as I can see. I can see the uh, coffin now being carried 
into the church. You can see how packed it is and how many thousands of people there are uh, along the route that there have been. Uh, let's have a listen into what's going on.
I'm ready. Yeah, I'm no, oh, I'm listening. So in the last in the last 20 minutes. So in the last 20 minutes, what just happened is the car carrying Shreen's casket went into uh, the church. There was a Palestinian flag in the back. The Israeli police smashed that to take the flag. Then there was a protest that just happened, people protesting. Uh, one man raised the Palestinian flag. Raising the Palestinian flag is actually illegal in Israel. And then the police moved in uh, to try and take the flag. And now scuffles are taking place. They're arresting a man uh, for chanting. And the Israeli police are now uh, beating on that man, you can see. He's trying to escape. You can see the tensions here. Uh, he's surrounded by Israeli police. They're beating him uh, to try and arrest him. He doesn't have a flag. They're subduing him. These people uh, are angry and they're shouting. Uh, he's just out of shot. The man has now been arrested. There's a huge crowd here at uh, Jaffa Gate, the entrance to the church, where the funeral service is taking place. Now, the Israeli police are still in that area. They've arrested one man just as we were live on air. But this was a protest uh, against the fact that Shireen's body wasn't allowed to be walked here. These people are now uh, chanting for national Palestinian unity and slogans in support of Shireen. The Israeli police have now mounted a barrier, stopping anybody from going further from this area. I'm just going to stop talking for a second to give you a sense of what people are saying, what people are chanting.
and it's extraordinary that we're here now and, and you can just see the high emotions and there's no surprise at all. No, not at all. You know, Shireen was loved by so many people and her, her, her killing is a, a blow to the world internationally. It's a blow to us nationally and it's a blow to me personally. She went into the hearts of every single Palestinian and I dare say every Arab uh, household because of her touching reporting and the way that she had of bringing to light the reality of Israel's brutal occupation. I'm not surprised by this at all. Right, yeah, this is the intensity of reaction and how widespread it is. I mean, and not just here in uh, quite East Jerusalem, but right across the world. Yes, her funeral procession began in, in Jenin, in the northern part of Palestine, went through Nablus and down to Ramallah and from Ramallah into Jerusalem. Uh, we've been saying that she went from the from the earth of Palestine to the gates of heaven, from Jenin all the way up to Jerusalem. And she deserves it. She deserves it. So what now? Where can we extract something positive? Well, I think, um, I think that what's very important is that we have to demand accountability from Israel. It must be said over and over again. Shirin would not have been in Jenin had the Israeli army not been in Jenin. And they are 100% responsible for her murder. They know it. We know it. And these attempts of to, to try to hide, to obfuscate, to pretend that it's somebody else, these fake calls for an investigation, we've seen this time and again. What now must happen is that Israel must be held accountable. We've been saying this time and time again. Shirin is not the first journalist to be killed by Israel, and I, I fear that she's not going to be the last either. It's now time for accountability, and we must demand that Israel be held accountable because it is Israel who is responsible. But hasn't that demand been made for a very long time to absolutely no effect whatsoever? It has been, been made for such a long time. I'm hoping now with Shirin's very, uh, she had a very high profile and she touched so many that people will now realize and understand the importance of holding Israel accountable. You know, this isn't the first time, as I mentioned, just a few years ago, we saw them kill a Palestinian photographer in the Gaza Strip. And, uh, and later it emerged that we saw videos of Israeli soldiers cheering themselves on for, for hitting Palestinians. This is the type of action that has to come to an, to an end. And I, I believe that with Shirin's murder, that the world will now see that it's time for them to act. If not, we're going to continue to see this time and again. Well, those scenes we saw just, what, half an hour ago, 40 minutes ago, outside the hospital as her casket was being brought out, and people just wanted to walk here. They wanted to mourn and, and pay their respects in, in a civilized fashion, but it wasn't allowed to happen by the Israeli soldiers. But this is what it means to live under military occupation, is that they try to control your happiness and they try to control your mourning. The fact that they were fighting with, with uh, mourners, that they were shooting sun grenades at them, that they were beating them up, all because they wanted to carry her casket through the streets of Jerusalem, the place that she loved the most on, the, on this earth. It shows the depths, the depravity that Israel's military occupation has. There's a great deal of anger, isn't there? A great deal of anger now. I mean, there always has been, but particularly because of this. And we're seeing it come to life in the streets this afternoon. Do you think that that will build, that that may actually gain momentum? For certain, uh, well, undoubtedly. You know, her, her funeral today is, is both anger, but it's also a celebration of her life. People who are cheering are celebrating her life and thanking her for the more than 25 years that she gave in, in, in telling our story, in, in portraying to the world what it's like for us to live under Israeli military rule. So these, these chants that you're hearing are also a celebration of her life, as well as the, the compounded anger, particularly the way that she was killed, and the attempts to, to try to obfuscate, to try to pretend that it wasn't them who did it, when we know that it was. I don't care. I don't care. So the, the, the kids are sorry. Sorry. coming by with another child. It's a, it's a very, very good to see the country, so he does with the child on his shoulders. So, so Diana, we'll, we'll plow on. In the meantime, just going back to the investigation. The, uh, well, the United States have said that Israel are perfectly capable of carrying out a thorough and fair and uh, transparent investigation. Well, Israel has the support of the United States in that, there's never going to be progress, is there? No, there's never going to be an investigation, and we don't need one. We know exactly how it was that she was killed. We have 
video evidence of it, but more importantly, we have eyewitness testimony. What is it that an investigation is going to produce that the very people whose job it is to highlight and to tell the truth, what is it that this investigation is going to do? We've seen this in the past, where Israel claims that they're going to carry it out, out investigations, and they don't. It's just a way of buying more time, of keeping people quiet until the next murder. And again, it's this Hasbro, this propaganda 101. Step one is to try to obfuscate, to blame somebody else, or to blame Palestinians for their own deaths. Step two is to call for some fake investigation, which leads to nowhere. And step three is to perhaps say, oh, sorry, we've been down this path before, and we know where it leads, and we know that at the end of the day, nothing is going to come out of it. This is where it's time for international accountability, that the international world has to put pressure on Israel to end this. And the fact that we have been saying this time and again, it's, you know, the, the, it's, it's just devastating to Palestinians because we keep saying, how much more is it that the world needs to see before they wake up and realize that this apartheid regime has to come to an end? Uh, there is a case coming before the International Criminal Court. Uh, it said that Shireen's murder will be added to that. Any recourse there? Any hope there of any resolution? I, I certainly hope so. I certainly hope that there is some outcome to this. Um, I'm not optimistic because the court system takes a very, very, very long time. But I want to say that this isn't the first time that Israel has targeted Al Jazeera. We saw just last year that they bombed the Al Jazeera building and the AP building. We saw just last year that they broke the arm of Jibar al Budere, Shirin's co uh, colleague and friend. And now this year, this. In 2017, the Israeli government said that they were going to do their best to shut down Al Jazeera. And we see that, that they are doing exactly what it is that they want to do. It's only through international accountability that this will come to an end. Hey, so we're seeing pictures from inside the church uh, on half of our screens of, of the ceremony that's going on. Uh, tell us a little bit more about Shireen and what kind of person she was. No, Shireen, Shireen was... Um, was a wonderful person. I, I, I don't think there are words that I can say that won't lead me to cry um, when talking about Shireen. She was kind. She was generous. She had a great sense of humor, a fantastic laugh, was as humble as humble can be, didn't really understand how well loved uh, she was by, by the world. And Above all else, she loved her job, and she loved she loved shedding light on Palestine. She was. Um, I, I can't believe that we're even speaking about her in the past tense. Okay, thank you so much, Dana. I know we're going to talk to you a little bit later, so hang around if you can in this, in this very busy crowd. Do appreciate that very much. As you see, the, the service is still going on, and uh, once it's complete, it shouldn't be too long now. Uh, then Shireen's body casket will be taken to Mount Zion, to the cemetery there. Uh, quite how that will go remains to be seen. It's going to be quite a tricky thing to extract the casket and into the crowds here and then back out onto the main streets uh, where we saw that trouble flare up that Imran was talking about a little while ago. But let's have a listen in to what's going on inside the church. <laughs> 